about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk. He picked up a piece of paper. And he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. The truth is about the Middle East is, had there been no oil there, it would be like Africa. Nobody is threatening to intervene in Africa. The problem is the opposite. We keep asking for people to intervene and stop it. And there's, uh, there's no question that the presence of petroleum throughout the region has sparked great power involvement. Whether that was the specific motivation for the coup or not, I can't tell you. But, but there was definitely, there's always been this attitude that somehow we could intervene and use force in the region. Well, I think that Iran is a dangerous power. I think it's a hegemonistic power. It would like to have greater control in the Middle East. It is a threat to the nations in the Middle East. And as the president said, if it had nuclear weapons, it could be a threat to the United States as well. Do you think that the United States can stop Iran from obtaining those nuclear weapons through diplomacy, especially given with all these sanctions that we have? Um, I, I was in Iran a few months ago. Uh, they, they, they seem to get plenty of what they need, in part from, well, places like China. If the United States could bring China and Russia to bear, if we really went after the sanctions in the toughest possible way, if we're willing to impact Iran's ability to deal in oil, then I think it's possible that sanctions could have a decisive impact. I think sanctions are already having an impact. Mm -hmm. I think there's no question that we've made it tougher on the Iranian regime, but uh, it's clear that the Iranian regime uh, seems determined to move ahead. Uh, one thing that amazed me when, when I was there was that the most common bill in Iran has the nuclear symbol emblazoned on it. Um, and everyone we talked to there seemed to very much support the program for, for whatever reason, um, you know, from a public relations point of view. Uh, so, so does that mean that this really becomes inevitable, that the people there are willing to make the sacrifices uh, that are needed to pursue a, a full nuclear program? Well, Iran has sold this as a national pride and national achievement for nuclear energy, not for nuclear weapons. They're continuing to deny their nuclear weapons program, but of course, the indications are that they're pursuing it. Mm -hmm. I think the president's had a very strong and proactive policy in this. I think he's been very tough-minded on it. He's offered diplomacy. He's offered dialogue. He's gone for tough sanctions. He said no options off the table. And I think that what you're seeing is that we're approaching a decision point mm -hmm. with respect to Iran. But it's a little bit difficult for me when I watch the dialogue going back and forth yeah. that um, no one has any better answer to this than our president has right now. Uh, General Clark, do you think that America could go to war in Iran right now if we needed to? Because there are plenty out there who say we can't. Military is overextended. We have cuts hitting our military. That the, the bluff of the United States could be called if military uh, force in Iran were required. We just we don't have what it takes. Well, we wouldn't be going into Iran to occupy Iran. There's no requirement to do that. We would go in with some, I think, some fairly significant strikes. I don't think they'd be limited just to the Iranian nuclear facilities, but they'd be much broader strikes against Iran's military and industrial complex and its ability to retaliate. 
Now, ultimately, we know the Iranians have a worldwide terrorist network. We know they would uh, attempt to respond using terror. Mm -hmm. But I think that the uh, overwhelming power of the United States would be very, very effective against Iran's conventional and unconventional military capabilities, especially in the Persian Gulf and in Iran. All right, General Clark, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it.